Today, I want to talk about memories. What about memories? Well, where do they reside and what should we do with them? That's coming up next. Hey there, fellow roadies, Greg Kleist here with the Road to Your Family History podcast. Today, I want to talk about memories. You know, uh, memories can be funny. I I don't mean like ha-ha funny. I mean just, well, interesting more than anything, I think. Let me give you an example. I grew up in the same small house out just outside of Pittsburgh from the time I was born until the time I left to join the Air Force when I was 19 years old. Pretty much all my childhood memories are wrapped up in that little house. Memories of Christmases with a shiny silver Christmas tree that was lit up by a color wheel that slowly turned and turned that Christmas tree from red to green to blue and back to silver again. You know, I could watch that thing for hours. Memories of birthday parties. I didn't have a lot, just when I was very little. But I would have uh, three, four, five friends over, and uh, it was the only day during the year where we had complete reign of the house. And coincidentally, it was the only day of the year where that normally tidy little house looked like a tornado had gone through it. Memories of a flower bed that took up one whole side of the house, and memories of my parents giving me their coffee grounds from their percolator to pour those coffee grounds on the dirt in the flower bed. I had no idea how or why this stuff would possibly help flowers grow, but I want to tell you From late spring to early fall, that flower bed was just an explosion of color. My mother knew what she was doing. Well, then after a few years, I went away to join the U.S. Air Force. I had left that little house. Now, fast forward a few more years, and my mother passed away. And in several years after that, my father. When that happened, my brother and I had responsibility to empty out and clean out that house uh, to get it ready to sell it to someone else. Now, I mean, that it was a sad time. But I was optimistic that another family would buy that house and make their own memories in it. Maybe a young couple that just got married, or maybe a small family that just got out of the military and was starting their civilian lives. I went back to visit in Pittsburgh uh, almost every year, but there were several years where I never went back to look at that house. I just didn't feel the need to do that. But then eventually I said, yeah, I'm going to go by and take a look at the old house. I expected maybe there'd be kids playing in the yard. Maybe there'd be a uh, a tire swing hanging off the, the low branch of that uh, Chinese elm tree that was in the side yard there. I always wanted a tire swing, but never did get one of those. So I go, I turn into the road, and our house is the one at the very end. So I pull up in front of the house, and I'm just kind of staring at it because I can't really see much of the house, just really the top part of the roof. So there was a uh, a grass alley that went in between our house and the one next door to us, maybe 15 feet wide. So I park at the bottom of that. I get out of the car and I'm just looking up. And like I said, I could only see the very top of the house because Uh, We had hedges that were in the front yard and went like halfway up the sides of the yard. And my father kept them pretty neatly trimmed, mainly about two or three feet high and squared off. But these hedges now were, oh man, they had to be at least 12 to 15 feet high. Branches just going off all over the place in every direction. So I, I walk up that alley 
to the side of the house. And there's a little entrance there because there's like a little stone walkway that went into the backyard. I go in there. Of course, the first thing I notice is the grass and weeds were, oh, horribly overgrown. Now, I'm six foot four, but most of this stuff came up to my chest or even in places to my chin. I had never, ever seen it like that. Then I looked at the house. The house. We had aluminum siding on the house, and parts of the siding were hanging off some. Uh, the gutters were the same way. Some was hanging down from the, the edge of the house. The windows. I think just uh, really every single window was either cracked or partly broken out or all the way broken out. It, it was just a sight that I, I was hard for me to, to to get my hands around. So I walked down this little stone walkway to the to the back cement patio there. Uh, it's the same patio where my mother used to hang clothes to dry. There was a pole in each far corner of this cement patio, uh, concrete patio, and she would string clothesline in between the two and then hang the clothes out there. Well, on this uh, concrete patio now, I was walking, and it was littered with empty beer cans and liquor bottles. Oh, man a sight I had never, ever thought I would see. So I walked gingerly in between them to the back door. The storm door was barely hanging on. It wasn't closed. It was open. It was just swinging on hinges that looked like, I don't even know how the door was staying up. So I, I put my hand on the doorknob of the wooden back door. I turn it and start the push, and it just wasn't moving. So I grab it tighter, put my shoulder into it some. I'm trying to push this door open, and I hear the creak of wood against wood. Being exposed to the elements, I guess it probably uh, made the door a bit swollen. So I step back, put my hand on my chin, and I'm just looking at it thinking, what should I do? Should I just try harder, put my shoulder into it a little bit more? Maybe even take a little bit of a running start a couple steps. Or just use my foot to try to kick it in. Well, after thinking about it for a little while, I just came to the realization, you know, I, I, I see what this house looks like from the outside. In horrible shape. I don't even think I want to see what it looks like on the inside. And I don't even know what is inside this house. So I decide I'm not going to enter the house. But I did go around to the side of the house, to the window to my bedroom. I couldn't look in it. There were some, some drapes uh, hanging there. But there was a piece of paper in the window. I couldn't see it. I had to wade through all these overgrown weeds and grass to take a closer look at this paper. This paper was a notice from our city. The city council had decided that this house, the house I grew up in, that this house was a danger to the neighborhood and should be torn down. My childhood house. And this paper sign was in my bedroom window only uh, literally inches from where I laid in bed every night as I was growing up. Wow. Wow. Talk about a kick in the gut. So I just retraced my steps back to that little alley between our house and the next house. And, uh, as my mind was spinning a little bit, I looked at the house that was right across the alley there. It's in perfect shape. Grass and bushes trimmed perfectly. All the way down the street, all the houses. They were probably about the same age built after World War II. And I was just trying to think, how how did this happen? So I go down to my car. I get in. 
I plop down in the driver's seat. I put my two hands on the steering wheel and just hang my head. I felt, I, I, I felt like I was going to cry. I mean, shouldn't I cry? Didn't I deserve to? I mean, here's my childhood home literally falling down right in front of me. Shouldn't I cry? I'm not sure how long I sat there. It might have been five minutes, might have been 10 minutes, might have been 15, might have even been 20 minutes. Just thinking about some of those memories that I talked about earlier. But then I raised my head, having not shed a tear at this point, and thought to myself, you know what? That house, and I was actually pointing to the house, says that house does not contain my memories. They can tear that house down. They can plow it into the ground. But my memories are going to live on in my head and my heart. They're not going away. I don't care what they do to that house. Those memories are not going away, and God willing, until the day I die. So what does that mean? That means, fellow roadies, that our memories are, are unique to each, each one of us. So what should we do with them? We should treasure them, first of all, but we have to share them. Part of the reason we do this family history or have an interest in maybe starting to do family history is because we want to preserve memories and make sure future generations know about them. So do this. Share the memories. Either write them down on a piece of paper or in your computer. You can make audio files or you can get on YouTube and create videos. My goodness, YouTube, it doesn't cost anything to get a YouTube channel and to make YouTube videos. You can make them private. You don't have to post them for the, for the world to see. You can just send a link to them to family members you want to have them, and then only they can watch them. I'm going to be doing that myself. I'm going to be making, I believe at this point, YouTube videos for my daughter. I only have one child. But I want her to know and to remember uh, some of the things that I experienced in my life. What I experienced going to school, going to Catholic school in the next town over. My experience in the Air Force my experiences on the day that she was born. Being scared out of my wits because I didn't know how to be a parent. I, I mean, I was only 19 years old. Well, I turned 20 a month after she was born. What was I going to do? But I looked at this, this little miniature human being that her mother and I created. Oh my, that, we created that? That was just beyond comprehension to me. And that's just one of the memories. I want my daughter to remember and cherish now and long after I'm gone. And you can do that too. You don't have kids? Well, you might have nieces and nephews, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, cousins, certainly. So, precious listener and fellow roadies, I would just encourage you to preserve those memories any way you can. And even further, Interview family members about your family history, especially the older ones. That's something I regret oh, terribly. The older ones because, well, they're probably going to be the, the first ones to leave this earth. But interview your oldest family members about your family history and 
you don't even have to uh, you don't even have to address it to them. It's family history, just their memories. What was their life like? Don't let them die and their unique memories die with them for nobody to hear again. Do that, precious listeners. We all need to do that. Well, that's all I have for this episode. It was uh, a little bit emotional. I, I'm sorry if if uh, you didn't really like this one so much, but it just it just really means so much to me. So I appreciate you sticking with me, and I will see you next time. Let me know your experience with memories or how you've preserved memories for your family. <laughs> 